Hey everybody and welcome back. So today we are going to talk about how to plan a baby shower. I have been fortunate enough to plan two of my own. I only have two children, two daughters, and I planned and decorated everything myself. Um, well, I had the, you know, vision and I made it come to life or I was able to explain it to somebody else about what I wanted. And either way, my vision still came, you know, to life so now I also have helped my family and friends out with their baby showers so it's only right that I make a very detailed workbook for you guys out there maybe this is your first baby and you don't know how to go about planning a baby shower or maybe nobody around you has a baby and you um and you know you want the experience of planning your own baby shower for whatever your reason it is but trust me you're going to have fun this is a very detailed workbook and you can also purchase this workbook at the end of this video um, because we're going to go through the whole workbook or part of it I should say and make sure that you check out the description below or find the link and you can go ahead and purchase this um, after the video so how to plan a baby shower and no this cute little baby on my cover is not my baby it's, uh, I got this picture from like Unsplash or somewhere like that. So um, this is not my baby, <laughs> but it is a cute little baby. So there I am. I'm your virtual, uh, you know, wedding, special event, wedding, wedding event planner, creator, whatever you want to call me. So in the picture, you see me at my first baby shower for my oldest daughter, who is now five. Can you believe how time goes by fast? So she is now five, but this is when I was pregnant with her. And like I said before, I planned and designed this baby shower. So this is the candy table, a fairy tale candy, uh, yeah, candy table. And the guests absolutely loved it. Um, and I would, you know, also teach you how to do the same, how to plan and design and create your own baby shower experience uh, about how you want it. And for the most part, people turn to me when they want to host a memorable celebration. They want the secret sauce to how they can stretch their budget to make it inexpensive, look expensive, and mostly, and most importantly, how to get product services for a fraction of the price. And that's all I'm about. I'm a frugal shopper. I'm all about a budget, a deal. So that's what you're going to get when you roll with me is the best of the best. So... Let's get started. So let's plan this. And congratulations on your new bundle of joy. Rather that be um, your first baby. Maybe you're planning it for somebody. But regardless of the fact, whoever this is for, congratulations. And I hope that you are going to enjoy planning this baby shower as much as I did putting this workbook together. It brings back so many memories of when I was pregnant and planning my shower or my showers, I should say, and just the whole whole process I loved and enjoyed. So before we get started, you're gonna wanna plan with the budget. You wanna you have to have a budget, you have to know what you want from out of a venue, what you want out of the location, um, and how you just see it, how you just envision this whole baby shower coming together. Everybody's excited and anxious to just get started with the baby shower, let alone the arrival of the baby. So you just want everything to be perfect. So, you know, those little baby bottles and all those different, all those different cute little things. Don't let it draw you into a financial hole because you still have to live your life and still be able to survive after the baby shower. And you don't want to be in the red because you got drawn into the whole moment of a baby's on the way or a whole moment you got drawn into like the theme, whatever the theme is, you just, it just took you in. So you don't want to get sucked into this financial hole. So that's why you have to create a realistic budget. Always keep track of your expenses. Always have like the venue location costs. I would recommend viewing at least three places for your baby shower. Um, don't I know some people like to move towards like wedding venues because of the prettiness and you know the luxury is you know like the luxury of it or what have you you don't have to go to those places you can go to like different places and still create your own 
luxury feel if that's what you're going for and some other location and venues that I would recommend if you're looking for like a unique um architectural design I would recommend that you check out like some colleges or universities um amphitheaters um there's a whole list and I'll try to include include that video that I did before if I still have it below if not I will make a list and include it below so that way you can have a general idea of other venues that still serve a purpose and that are still a unique space and that something that your guests would appreciate and they had no idea maybe that these locations or venues were even, you know, doable for baby showers. So you might be bringing more business regardless of the fact if you're into that, like, okay, I didn't, I didn't mean to bring, you know, not, not that you didn't mean to bring business, but now you have opened up people's uh, eyes to somewhere new besides the old traditional places that you guys normally go. So, and you also want to factor in catering, decorations, you know, rentals, do y'all need chairs, tables, etc. What's your entertainment going to be in favors because people always get uh, wrapped up in favors as well. They got to have the best of the best favors or some people just cut corners when it comes to favors, but either way, favors... Cause you have, you know, you got to make sure that it's the right amount for the the right amount of people. So favors can also run you a pretty penny if you're not careful. Right here, you see a baby shower expense sheet. So we're gonna start with products and services. How much do you have to spend? How much money you got to play with for this baby shower? The venue location. What did you narrow it down to? What is the location that you're going to be hosting this beautiful, fun? unique baby shower ad who's catering and also write down the cost of caterer as well and i will also recommend unless you trust and know this person or this company maybe looking into other options as well like at least three who's making a cake or dessert who's going to be your dessert person and what is their price so you're going to put that there renting anything again like chairs tables etc and I will also recommend three companies and you just narrow down price right price wise are you having entertainment like a DJ or a band singer um, people hanging from the roof or something from the ceiling or something like that I don't know whatever your vision is who whatever your entertainment is going to be always narrow that down to as well as to three companies or three people i don't know um you know well it depends on what your entertainment is going to be what i will always just price price you know price shop around before narrowing down my decision and also seeing who's available on the date of the baby shower um what's your favors what's your estimated price that you want to spend out of your budget on favors again like i said before people get very very um iffy I would say with favors, either they're going, either they're going to do it and do it big, or they're just going to kind of, eh, it's just a favor, you know. So it just depends on what, um, what you have to spend, what you have to play with for your favors. And if I, my suggestion would be, get something that is useful to your guests. That way, you make your money, your money's being used over and over and over and over and over and over again, versus just being consumed and that's it or not used at all so make it a good one maybe take a survey for people and see what what you know what they what what they gravitate more towards so um i would know during this covid thing honestly maybe like you could do like a covid uh, favor thing with like a mask i would do like a universal mask especially if it's like a jack and jill like a universal mask but if it's for like a jill and it's just all all the ladies i would do like a nice 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 um mask like that's like girly like ladylike mask some hand sanitizer and yeah i would just do that and then you know you could probably do like some mints or something like that i don't know but during this time, I would go based upon for my favors. I would go lean more towards like what's useful for the season, 
that it's in. That way people are able to use it or maybe put it up and, you know, use it for maybe the upcoming season or whatever. But make your favors useful to your guests. Decorations. People love to deck their stuff out, which is which is great. Decorations are like seasoning to meat, seasoning to chicken, seasoning to your food. Decorations is just seasoning to that add that special added touch to a blank space. Even if you do decide to go with like a, an expensive wedding venue or something like that, you're still going to want to add some decorations. So you have to factor in decorations as well. And some people also buy their own tablecloths and table chair and chair covers. So that you have to include that as well. That's why it's great to make a list to see exactly what all you need and what all you have. Are you hiring somebody to make balloon art for you? You know those beautiful, beautiful, beautiful balloon creations that you see on different groups on Facebook and different pictures on Instagram and all those different um, videos that you see on YouTube. Who is making your balloon art? Maybe you're going to do it and learn how to do it. It's not hard to do, but it is very time consuming to do. Um, me, myself, I'm going to be honest. I don't fool around with no balloons. I don't touch them. They just, it's just, it's just something I don't really do. Like I do it, but it's not going to be big balloons with mixed in with small balloons. I can only do what I can do. <laughs> and it's still a nice thing. But as far as balloons, balloons, are you going to do them? Or are you going to have somebody else do them? So that's what you have to kind of factor in. And if you are going to do them yourself, make sure that you have enough time to assemble your columns, assemble stuff. So that way, when you get there to decorate, you're able to just, you know, put it up however you choose to. And I will always recommend that you bring extra balloons and some sort of balloon uh thing that you know blows up your balloons make sure that you have that available too just in case some pop before the baby shower you're able to correct it very quickly so and parents attire i know so i know people get dressed up and decked out for their baby shower which is uh, perfectly okay don't let nobody tell you otherwise because i know some people are like it's just a baby shower you don't gotta get dressed up yeah you do so you have to factor in that as well your attire your hair your makeup factor in all that and then you know for the first column you see cost so you want to make sure that you get the cost that you're going to that you are quoted and always get who you spoke with next column deposit for services do you have to leave a deposit and if so what it is and what's the remaining balance for these products or services and have you paid anything off and you're just going to leave a check mark now the money maker right here the money maker money breaker right here who are you feeding who's all coming who's coming to your baby shower and I know some feelings may be hurt, but I would not recommend inviting everybody simply because do you want your, you have to figure out what's your real reason for having the shower. Okay. Once you determine that, then it'll be easier to determine who's all coming to your baby shower. So ask yourself, determine what is the real reason you're, you're having a shower. Are you a you want to have a baby shower because that's what you're supposed to do. B, you want get you want slash neat gifts and we'll be inviting everybody. C, I'm not looking for gifts. I just want to be around close family and friends to honor my unborn child. So once you discover your answer for this, it is going to be easier to develop your list. And that way you get the people that you really want there on your guest list but if you're choosing a i mean if you're choosing b and you're just gonna be inviting everybody know this that if you're inviting everybody they may they might bring 
or invite other people. So now you're way over your budget. Food is going to be um, uncounted for. Okay, it's going to be uncounted for because you don't know who, really a number of who's all coming. Um, and as well as favors and stuff like that, there's no general count that you can do because you don't really have a controlled guest list. Okay, but if you choose to have a baby shower just because that's what you are supposed to do, still narrow down your list to the people that you actually want there, the people that you know that's going to be around after the birth of the baby. And that's just, you know, people who you want to see. And for C, if you're not looking for gifts, but you just want to be around close family and friends, do just that. Invite your close family and friends. If it's not many, that's okay. You still had a great turnout. You still had the people that you absolutely wanted there. Your budget is going to be fine because it's not going to be you know just anybody showing up you know who you want there you know who's going to be coming you know what they you know food wise and now you know favor wise so that is my look on the guest list so and like I said before invite those that matter and I just, you know, spoke about that before, so I'm not going to really go on this page, but that's that. And then I also give you in this workbook guest list sheets. So that's one. I give you one, two, three, three of them. So next, choosing a venue or location. For a baby shower, you could transform any space you have within your budget. And I, sp and I spoke about this before into what you want it to be. Don't view any, you know, the space that you can afford as just basic and plain, you have to create the vision because these luxury, the, the, when you go into a building, they, that space was created. It was, it did not plop down on this earth like that. It did not plop down on the space like that. Somebody saw a vision for that building. Somebody saw a vision for that space. Somebody saw a vision and they executed their vision to, for you to be able to walk into and say, ooh and ah. So that's what you have to do. Transform any space into what you want it to be. So some venues to consider. So I I will still include this venues list. But I mean, you know, in the description. But you have it right here as well. So your home. Don't, don't count your home out. Especially if you know that you have the space to, uh, you know, have your shower or the shower. A local park, always check with your town to see how you can go about uh, renting space at your local park for your shower. Colleges and universities, yes, they have space available for special events. You just have to get in touch with the right person. And also know that colleges and universities serve as a landmark, so people will be able to find it. And they have shot, uh, parking and whatever else you need, they have it there. And also check with catering to see... You know, if they have a catering part of the school, uh, a catering through their kitchen, I should say. Next, the VFW American Legion. Don't count these places out. You can't transform these places. Just make sure that you're able to hang stuff on the wall, ceiling, if that's what you choose to do. And just have fun transforming it, as well as the Knights of Columbus. You can do that as well. Museums, they serve as a very unique uh, open space for you to create uh a nice a very nice baby shower if you're looking for like a baby shower thing for a museum i would do something like art like you know like an eric carl maybe or something fun and colorful you know for a museum uh or in also as for an art gallery too you just have to be you know creative see what's out there see what you can come up with and just make that take that theme at the museum or art gallery and literally run with it. A garden, a local garden or some botanical garden, that'll be very nice. Historic landmarks, wherever that may be in your area. See, I call your town up and say, hey, I wanna have a baby shower here. If this is, can I do this or, you know, and or how do I go about doing this? And no, somebody should be able to provide you the information that you need. And also a zoo. How fun is that? 
how fun is that you take everybody to the zoo you know you guys open up gifts and everything like that and then people are able to walk through the zoo but just know if you do have it at a zoo and people have kids they are going to bring their kids obviously because that is zoo so just factor in you can't kind of rule out no children if it's at a zoo i'm just saying <laughs> there are plenty of unique venue and locations to host your baby shower you just have to create and see the vision and i give you in this workbook then this yeah in the workbook a very detailed checklist so say that you're actually having a physical baby shower mean that you're actually going to a location or a venue so you want to fill in what is the date of the shower be creative guests don't want to attend repetitive theme so what's the theme you're going to put that there where will you be hosting the shower what is the theme of your shower who's catering you know, and some, you know, the red, other stuff that I mentioned before and some new stuff. So like finding invitation that fit the theme, you know, try sdcanva.com or creativemarket.com. These are all great inexpensive places to either create free or inexpensive invitations or some sort of announcements, whatever you got going on. These three places, I highly recommend that you look first. Um, and you also want to make sure that you send out your invitation one month prior how many people RSVP? It is very important that you keep track of this. If people have RSVP, make sure that you keep track. Um, if people have not RSVP and you invite them, I, it will be nice just to kind of reach out to them just to kind of see where they are at, if they're coming or not. At least you know, hey, I'm expecting this amount of people or hey, such and such is coming, but he's, he or she is just running late. But I still want to include them in the account. So you just have to really control and stay on top of your RSVP. So that way you know within your budget how much food you should have. How much cake or dessert you should have. How many favors you should have. So everything is counted and, um, and it adds up. You want to order your personalized goodies two months ahead of time. Just to ensure that it arrives and it's, and it's you know how it should be. So that if you have to correct anything, you have more than enough time to correct it and um, still get it within a good time frame before your shower. We come up with some cool, unique baby shower games. Be fun, you know, and don't think that, oh, baby showers are just for girls or ladies. No, now it's very popular to include dad and dad's family, dad's friends into the picture. So make sure that you keep them in mind too. And you never know, they might actually participate in the baby shower game. So this next checklist is for those out there that choose to have a virtual baby shower. That is very popular these days. Um, the virtual baby shower, especially with the virus and stuff. So what is the date of the shower? And you know, all this stuff right here, I've already said before so i'm just gonna skip around and for your virtual baby shower you just want to send your invitations one month prior and include the live stream platform that you're going to be using so if you're going to do like facebook live instagram live zoom something like that you want to notify people one month prior so that way they can put it on their calendars or set a reminder somewhere and they know where to be um the date of your virtual baby shower and they know how to get your gift their gift from them to you you know, to you in a, a reasonable a reasonable amount of time. You want to stage a room in your house to host your baby shower. So you want to make sure it's clean, neat, presentable. Get all the clutter and papers and toys out of the back room, out of the background, I should say. And just make it very neat and clean for, you know, as if people were actually coming to your house. Who is creating your bloom masterpiece in price? Some people still do have at the um at their baby shower, you know, balloons and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. And this is very, 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 very important. Testing out your live stream platform to ensure that you know how to navigate it properly, that the audio works fine, the vision, the you know, you they can see you. You can see them. So I would just have a friend 
or family member that doesn't live near you or something like that just kind of play around on Facebook Live with you or whatever your plat your live stream platform is going to be just so you can test out everything and get familiar with the functions and buttons and whatever else you need to and at least you know how to use it the day of your baby shower. Um, another inexpensive way to cut in quarters and not having to, you know, make invitations will be to set, create a private event page on Facebook to communicate with your guests. So that's way you can keep sending them reminders about the date and any other information. Like if you want them to drop gifts off or whatever, this is the place to communicate with. And always, always, always clean your camera, clean the background or do or make in, or buy a backdrop that correlates with the theme. That way you're able to, you know, just have fun and really bring the theme to life because you, you know, correlated the theme with your, with your, um, backdrop. Lastly, drive by baby shower again it's like some repetitive not repetitive stuff but you only you're literally going to choose the checklist that's for you so if you're going to have a physical baby shower a virtual baby shower and maybe a drive by baby shower at least you have a checklist to go about how you should you know go about this um so i'm just going to skip around because a lot of this is repetitive and we already heard this before so i'm just going to start with include with your invitation that this will be the drop off at the curb or you know you guys can either do like a parade drive by or just have a designated drop off area at the curb and kindly honk so people know that you're outside or you know that people are outside and you can come to the door and wave, whatever the case may be. Have the people knock or have somebody outside collecting the sanitizer and wiping out gifts. Um, and you also, again, order your personalized goodies two months ahead of time. And lastly, make thank you cards and display them on the favor table. Because people still do have favor tables and just kind of make like a favor table so people know, okay, we can grab a favor and a thank you card and, you know, be gone. So that's that. So I'm not going to go through the rest of these, but make sure that you, I don't want the video to be too long. So I hope that you had very you know that you gained a lot of insight and a lot of information just based upon this so far and make sure that you click the link below to grab the full downloadable baby shower workbook it will be instantly uh once you after you purchase it you will instantly get it so you, that way you're able to start planning your shower and have fun with it be creative and make sure that you print out this checklist or maybe you just want to use it print have you know have the workbook printed off so that way you can have it as a keepsake item and then you can just flip to you know your guest list or you could just flip to your baby shower checklist and go from there so you have my permission to print print this off as long as that you use it for your personal use but like i said there's still many more pages to go still many more pages to go and there's pictures that is included as well. So let me just show you guys one. So I, this is my friend's. She had a little boy and I helped her decorate it. It was a twinkle twinkle little star as you can see. She created the centerpieces for the tables. This was her vision here. And this was done at like some local banquet hall. And she just kind of transformed it to, into what she wanted it to be. And this was my second baby shower. It was butterflies in the bloom baby shower. And this is what everything looked like. That was the cake, the tables. I had a tent. I had a bounce house that was at the place setting. So there was plenty of different stuff. But like I said, I'm not going to go through it all. I want you all to take full advantage of this workbook. Make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. 
tell a friend that that you know is having a baby or planning a shower to come and grab this workbook because it is very detailed and it will keep you on track and you'll be able to just keep all your baby shower stuff in one place so make sure that you click the link below to come download your baby shower workbook and until next time